Hi everyone, welcome to this talk. I'm very excited to be here to talk about how we change oil for a fast running sidecar um, quickly and safely at Pinterest. So I'm today's uh, mechanic. My name is Fu Yuan and uh, I'm part of the traffic team at Pinterest Infrastructure Engineering. So today we are going to start with looking at uh, Envoy at Pinterest briefly. And uh, follow that, or we'll look at the configuration rolling out story at Pinterest, the challenges we faced, and the solutions we used. And at the end, we'll share some best practice we applied and lessons we have learned during this journey. So at Pinterest, we have been using Envoy started around four years ago. And uh, we use it very widely and deeply. When, you, when user traffic comes into Pinterest, it firstly hit Envoy, uh, Edge Envoy. From there, traffic get, get routed to our mesh, mesh Envoy. And starting from there, we, the traffic get routed to different services. And it did not stop there. We, uh, we also use Envoy at the storage layer. For example, we use Envoy, if we uh, install Envoy on MySQL so that we can get mutual TRS between services and MySQL. And at, at, the, at, at Edge Envoy, we, deal, we, we are processing millions of RPS per second. And this is the architecture of our mesh. At the very top is the tower. Tower is the centralized control plane of the service mesh. When a user land a config into the, the gate repo, a Jenkins will upload the config in, into the centralized control plane, and it will be persisted in Zookeeper. And uh, behind the, the centralized control plane, we install a agent on every host is called beacon. Beacon and tower, they are uh, between beacon and tower is a simple iterable but a very robust gRPC streaming protocol. And it's a gen gen generic config distribution protocol between them. And we leave, we leave the versioning and uh, other complexities to the last mile. So the beacon will be the, the agent dealing with XTS services. And <coughs> they will distribute the config through XTS to Envoy. And to be sitting side by side with Envoy, we have SDS sidecar and OPA agent to do to help Envoy to do authentication and authorization. We have a Envoy deployed on both EC2 VM and Kubernetes. It's cross-platform. We have one centralized control plane for both, both platforms. Um, compared to binary changes, config changes are more complicated. Why? Because we have thousands of clusters. Some are small, some are huge. Pinterest was created 10 years ago, and uh, since then, service was added gradually. So we got more and more services, and uh, every service has multiple, one or more clusters. And uh, to make it, <laughs> make it more complicated, we give every developer a EC2 instance as a dev box. Every dev, we treat every dev box a cluster. That is how we get thousands of clusters. And some of the clusters are small, only one listeners, one or two, maybe three up, upstreams. Some are huge. The, I, had, I just look at the largest cluster we have. It has about 300,000 lines of config. And the config dump was more than seven megabytes. And we roll, on, on average, we roll out tens of changes every day. And we deploy it, we need to deploy them fast. 
and uh, then you come to the question, if a problem happened to config, how do you root cause the pro problem quickly? And if, once you, after you relocate the problem, what do you do? Should we support rollback or should we mandate a forward fix? So think about this scenario, it's like uh, you are driving inside a car and your customer is enjoying the ride and this uh, it, it, it's perfect and uh, but deep in your heart you know you are due on an oil change and you don't want your customer to be unhappy how do you do that how do you do the oil change while you are so because the car is still running so here at the pinches we basically tackle this problem in three from three perspectives. The first one is configuration as code. So for configurations, we made make sure they are typed, they are tested, they are versionized, and they are deployable. The second one is we emphasize strong infrastructure governance. And the third one is we so state we use a state of configure ruling out. It's safeguarded by uh, a near real time feedback loop and a holistic health check. So configure a version as code typed. Why, why, how we make the configuration typed? We use a Jinja template. All the configuration are based on a set of Jinja templates that we provide. And when the user write their configuration, they need to compile. And the configurations are materialized at the compile time. And it's also versionized. When the compiler, the ground truth is in Git, it keeps the real the version and the centralized. When the Jink, when Jenkins copy the configuration into the tower, into the centralized control plane, it uh, add version there. So the configuration stored in centralized control plane is also versionized, and is tested. We run the unit test, a comprehensive set of unit tests before and after landing. So when we, 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 the tests are comprehensive, we test the listeners, every listener has, must have a have valid route, every route needs to have valid, valid upstream. If a, if a, a upstream require TLS, the downstream must give the correct configuration, they must match. Also like a port conflict, these kind of things are detected during build time. And also it is deployable. Uh, if we have a pipeline deploy, uh, deploy changes after a PR landed. And it does that for every PR, every config change. So infrastructure governance from perform mesh perspective, where is it's basically two questions. First one, where should I where should the Mesh configurations go. Should it be in a centralized repo? This, uh, this of course, has the pros and cons. Pros in, of a centralized repo is consistency. You get consistency. You have a quick turnaround for horizontal changes. By horizontal changes, I mean you will make a change which apply to multiple clusters. And of course, it also have counts. User experience may not be ideal. If you are a service owner, you most likely would like to have your configurations in your own repo instead of make a change to another centralized repo. Or should it sit, should it sit next to each service? Pros, user have better control of their, their config. They just need to go modify that config in their repo instead of go to your repo. However, this there is another big fragmentations. You when you your configuration, when some mesh configuration is scattered in multiple places, the build cost, think about the build cost. When you build the configuration, how do you build? How do you sure make sure that every every config need to be built is built? And another question is Actually, more severe question is, if a critical problem is spotted, like a security bug, that needs to change the config immediately, what do we do? 
you have hundreds of maybe hundreds of report. What will you do? How do you fix the problem? How do you make sure that you cover everything and you are not missing anything? So, based on that, the choice we made is we use a centralized repo. Everyone checking their configuration into that centralized repo. Another question I will with regard to infra governance is who owns what? Mesh is big. No matter how many mesh you have, you probably have one, how many? So you say you always have this problem. Who owns what? At Pinterest, we have three personas: infrastructure eng, security eng, and service owner. Each of them own different things of the mesh, as you as I listed here. So, how do we fit those personas into the service mesh world? Let's start with simple. A service A and a service B. And a service A talk to service B. In this case, we call service A a downstream, service B an upstream, right? And instead of treat each service A monolithic, we cut them into three pieces. Well, ingress, egress, and the service itself. Then we fit each persona's responsibilities into each piece. Infrastructure engineering. This, uh, this person owns this mesh infrastructure. Here example, the infrastructure engineer define well-known ports like ingress HTTPS port must be on port 8443. Then security engine. Engineering, security engineer on TL, TLS, on authorization, author authentication, and they are both they will they control both ingress and egress. Now last, service owner. Service owner, of course, on the service on the business logic in their service, and make like a routing in their from the egress side. However, this is the most important part. Think about the, your, your, think, think yourself as the owner of service B. Another, another service owner want to call your service and you want to read limit that service. That read limit config is part of service A, but given by service B's owner. This scenario, in this case, make it complicated. Like, so, one service on uh, your upstream owner contributed to downstream's uh, configuration. Think about that. It's the right thing to do. And it's, it, it's beyond those traditional definitions of service owner A of service owner, and service owner B owns things of their service totally. That's not right. This is different. This is how a how a mesh configuration should be like look like. And with that, if you look at service as, a service, as an owner of a service B, from egress side, he barely have, have something to configure. More, probably just some declaration of upstreams he, he need to talk to. Then, stage rolling out. At Pinterest, we do the <clears throat> but once a config gets landed, it's as uh, we so we started to push that config into a, a pile through a pipeline. So Jenkins job keep kicking in, started running unit tests. So although unit tests was run before PR land, however, after PR land, we still ran it because you could have a merge problem cause configuration failure. And once that is finished, we the Jenkins job will literally the pipeline will upload the configuration into Tower, the centralized control plane. And then it will deploy the configuration into latest stage Im immediately. And uh, every config change will start a pipeline run. And every pipeline run will deploy the configuration into latest stage automatically. It's uh, take about uh, three minutes after config is landed till it Get activated in latest stage, 
And after that finished, it will see there a send a notification to the on-call engineer and waiting for approval. And um, if the on-call engineer will there approve this, uh, click approve button, it will go to the next stage, which is the canary and the dev app. Those stages still activate the new configuration in those stage and, the, and the, the listen for several minutes and keep pulling the, the, you know, the service status and if that, there is no problem, it will consider the canary stage get passed and it will send another notification for approval. Once it is approved, it will go to go next it will go to pro stage. In pro stage, we do region C in parallel. So every, however, we see each region, we do availability, availability zone after availability zone. So every time we just deploy one availability zone. And if there's something wrong happened, we will stop there, investigate before it continue rolling out. So when you use a rollout configuration, how do you know there is a problem? So we have we we detect problems through a near real time feedback loop, and this is the definition of negative of negative feedback loop from Wikipedia. I don't want to re repeat, but it's basically like you take the output of your amplifier, apply some algorithm, and convert the part of the output and feed it into the input, and through that. You keep tuning your your system to get your ideal output. How do you apply, how do we apply that to our mesh? And the feedback part, it's basically used to detect problem. And what problem do we detect? We detect envoy envoy reject configs. Basically, this is through XCS protocol. And also we have a health check. Failures like data plan for the, it detect failures in both data plan and control plan. For a data plan side, service may be unhealthy. From the control plan side, maybe no, maybe kind of no config available for that specific uh, cluster, or maybe mesh infrastructure is not ready, or maybe listener are not up, and or may, or another case is when you send out a configuration. And it triggers some bug, and envoy just boom disappeared. Then we lose clients. And the last of all, last of all check we do is version mismatch. You send out a configuration to envoy, say, hey, hey, envoy, on this cluster, please use um, version one hundred. And then you you say you observe, oh, some of them or all of them are actually running on that. New on an old build, which is like 99, and then you know, oh, there's a problem because it's not on the right version. So, the first thing of uh, the first failure that we did have is the XDS uh, resource ac acceptance or rejection. So, with, within XDS uh, uh, protocol, it's about, it's about a re require discovery request and response. From this block, I got the control the, the config pipeline send a new configuration of a new version of the of the configuration to the tower and uh, tower this uh, send this new a new version to beacon, which is the on host agent, and then that on host agent convert this new version to XD, uh, as XDS response and send it to Envoy, give it to Envoy, Envoy look get the version and then do, do, do a bunch of checks and find out, hmm, I, I'm okay with this config and I accept it. Then the, it will use the discovery request to act the, 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 the new version. And then the, this will be, report, the, be aggregated in Beacon and Beacon will aggregate the, the report back to the tower. So, so the pipeline will keep current tower to see, oh, is there any failure, is there any failure? So another case is, for example, the new version contains or uh, require a new secret. The secret, however, wasn't granted to the process on that on, uh, of Envoy. 
So Envoy will get the new configuration and see, oh, I need a new 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 secret. They will ask SDS for the new secret and SDS reject that SDS reject the account the request. And Envoy will report an error to Beacon. And Beacon was was eventually send this aggregated result to tower. Tower will say, oh, okay, here, mark mark the, the cluster, see this cluster has this problem. And it will send the, the error to, to, uh, to ELK. And at the same time, the, the configure pipeline will see this error and fill the deployment. And we do this at cluster by cluster. So any cluster has a configuration problem will be detected and will be reflected on configuration pipeline. So another part is the holistic house check. We house check, check listener and we house check the, config, the configuration uh, but we house check control plan and for like the on host agent, SDS or part agent and also check listeners as both L7 and L4. And is we implement that as a script so that it, each platform can invoke it uh, easily as it does not need not, not depend on any platform. So real time feedback. The last thing is the confidence. So when, how how does the pipeline build the confidence? It's built on the, it's on top of confidence. So on Envoy report to, to Beacon every thirty seconds. Beacon to report to centralized control plan, which is the tower every thirty seconds. So in total, after one minute, you should be able to, to see the see the, whole, the last result after you send out the, the new configuration. So starting from the for T plus one minute, it starts building confidence. And after another minute, which is T plus two minutes, it will start, they will look at the confidence, say, oh, if I get high confidence, it will say, oh, every four, every four, if this configuration rule out, touch, 1,000 clusters, and uh, all of them has more than 90% acceptance rate, then we get enough confidence, and then let's exit early without having to wait. Just go to, let's go just move to our next stage. Or, if it, 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 it not get the enough confidence, it just keep waiting, keep, wait, keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, and then after five minutes, it will come out, and it will fail. And we'll contact the on call engineer to take a look what is going on. So, with regard to the visibility, since everyone uses Slack, we send a Slack message on every, on every deployment activity to our channel. From the right side, you can see that the, so the mesh configuration was rolled out and there's notification got sent out. And uh, after it finished the latest stage, it sent another notification. See, oh, please approve this change to DevApp and Canary. And as you can see, someone clicked up accept and it moved to prod. And it has been, well, once the, it takes uh, several minutes before it's actually finished, well, actually 10 minutes maybe, to finish prod and it sent a con congratulations. See, uh, everything was good. And on the left side, you can see that the configuration actually had a problem. And that pipeline detected that problem as a notification. See, there is the arrow, please investigate. And it has that ELK link so that the uncle engineer can click that and that link and see what the detailed, or see the detailed arrow. So in summary, we have a thousand clusters and uh, which uh, serves millions of uh, uh, RPS at the edge site. And um, from the change landing time to its fully activity in production, uh, if everything goes well, it's less than 30 minutes. And we had this, we just finished the V2 to V3 uh, API and configuration migration, and we had a zero incident thanks to the configuration pipeline. And that for the near real time uh, feedback loop. So um, because we have built the configuration, the control plane to be a generic resource distribution service, 
instead of just for XDS, um, other teams and from other organizations, organizations are seeing value of this this system, and they are moving they are moving their existing service, their their configuration into this the mesh control plane, so that they because they also want this per AZ validation, per AZ protection. So last, some best practice and lessons we learned. First, infrastructure governance is crucial. This is very important for our success. So let's admit today, service mesh is still a quick evolving world. Therefore, your changes are expected most of the time. And um, two years ago, we have been talking about XDS, uh, XDS v2. Last year, we talked about v3. We talked about U, uh, um, universal data plane API. And this year, if you look, we are, if you look at XDS, your you, UDP is, or, is already everywhere. And because, because of that, we need to define clear boundary between each role, between each team, and who owns what. Otherwise, you will run into fragmentation. That's gonna make your mesh unmanageable someday. And that's, I cannot emphasize, uh, emphasize this enough. And you will know. And the next one is MTLS. It's your good friend if it's not the best. We have nice, nice problem with our control plan, which delayed the EDS update. Make sure this made certain endpoint data stall. And because of that, if we did not have XDR, did not have MTRS, we would have a self three because the requests are routed, routed to incorrect, incorrect service. However, because we because they added mutual TRS, so the connections was blocked at layer four. So layer seven even did not even get a chance to talk to the wrong endpoints. We did not have had a self zero because of the because because of the, the bug. Is that the only thing we saw was some a slightly increased latency at the API service. Other than that, no problem. So it actually helped us with a self zero. It's not just for authentication. Another one is RTDS. RTDS is very powerful and uh, sometimes it's very dangerous. So here is a sad story. We added a global layer for our control, for our envoy. And we saw that it would be a good idea if we want to roll, our sons, roll out something globally. And someday, one of our, our developers want to change something in the global entry, global layer, and he top in a command line, command line, and however, however, he forgot to quote that JSON string in a quote 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 pair, and this sent a more formatted JSON to Envoy within two seconds. Every Envoy of Pinterest got this wrong value within two seconds, and sadly, there is a bug in Envoy, which caused which caused a catastrophic failure, catastrophic back, backtracking bug, which caused Envoy out of my memory within one minute. So Envoy cra crashed because of OOM, and then restarted, and then will work for maybe 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds, then crash again. So I cr crash every minute, and it took us a lot of effort, and almost 30 minutes to recover every Envoy. So it's a sad story. The lesson learned here is RTDS is powerful, but if you not necessary, don't use a global layer. Actually, after this incident, we disabled the global layer, and instead we.